Hi, ArtfieldWeather.com. Meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Thursday morning, August the 8th. Tropical storm Debbie made a second landfall earlier today, about 25 miles or so to the northeast of Charleston, South Carolina, moving inland at a slow pace right now. That pace starts to accelerate later today, and especially tonight and on Friday, it'll begin to accelerate off to the north, and ultimately the northeast passes just to the west of the I-95 corridor region, probably midday, early afternoon on Friday. Outer bands from this tropical system already into the mid-Atlantic region, but the main impact in the mid-Atlantic region will come from tonight into tomorrow evening. Beyond that, the weekend is looking quite nice throughout uh, much of the mid-Atlantic, northeast U.S., and uh, really the uh, right through the middle of next week, it looks quite nice, beginning on Saturday and lasting all the way through Wednesday of next week over the Great Lakes, the Midwest, the Mid-Atlantic, the Northeast U.S., very comfortable temperatures and humidity levels on the way. But let's focus now on Tropical Storm Debbie over the next several minutes here. First of all, again, it made landfall right around this area, just to the Northeast, maybe 20, 25 miles or an hour, uh, uh, 25 miles or so to the northeast of Charleston. Right now, maximum sustained winds are 50 miles per hour. It continues to move slowly to the north and west. Again, it will begin to accelerate over the next 12 to 24 hours or so, generally move in this fashion. We'll take a look at the official storm track uh, later on here. It goes to the west of DC and then pretty much over central uh, Pennsylvania and then off onto the north and east and you can see already outer bands associated with the tropical system have already made their way all the way into the mid-Atlantic region there'll be occasional showers today places like DC Philadelphia New York City and some of that rain can be heavy at times but again the main impact in the mid-Atlantic region uh, looks like it'll be from tonight into tomorrow evening you can see nice spiral shape to this system right now. This is feeding in tropical moisture right here on the southeastern flank right into uh, the Carolinas. And again, uh, when all is said and done, there will be some tremendous rainfall amounts in South Carolina especially, but also North Carolina, portions of Georgia. Uh, estimates right now maybe up to 25 inches or so from this uh, system in South Carolina, maybe 15 inches or so in portions of North Carolina to the north and Georgia to the south. And certainly there will be some heavy, heavy rainfall coming over the next 48 hours to the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast U.S. Well, let's take a look at the latest satellite imagery loop. This is using the GOES East uh, satellite system, and it's a kind of a combination of IR imagery at night, and then when the sun uh, comes up, uh, it switches over to visible type imagery. So you see that kind of a change in the in the uh, tone of the cloud cover here but in general it's a, it's a good view of the spiraling shape here and again tropical moisture just feeding into the system from the south and east and producing some tremendous rainfall over the Carolinas right now the center somewhere in this area right here and certainly that will weaken over the next six to twelve hours or so now that it's over land but uh, the rains will remain and a lot of heavy rain headed uh, up to the Mid-Atlantic region and then ultimately into the Northeast U.S. So here we go with Tropical Storm Debbie now inland following its second landfall over South Carolina. Well, let's take a look at the latest official storm track as depicted here on this map by NOAA's National Hurricane Center. They're based in Miami and uh, done a pretty good job, I think, with this uh, particular storm system. Again, Tropical Storm Debbie now over land, over the interior portions of upstate South Carolina, maximum sustained winds as of the last observation, 50 miles per hour. Certainly the center will weaken over the next several hours as it is now over land. It moved inland 25 miles to the north and east of Charleston earlier today. It will continue to move slowly over the next several hours, but then will begin to pick up speed. There are a couple of uh, uh, common characteristics of tropical systems. When they move to higher and higher latitudes, they tend to accelerate. Uh, and certainly this will accelerate over the next 24 to 48 hours or so, reaching all the way into the Canadian Maritime re region 
by, uh, let's say, the middle part of the upcoming weekend. It looks like the center of the remnants of Debbie will pass by to the west of I-95 and then continue to move to the north and east over the interior portions of uh, New England into the Canadian maritime region here. Now, uh, another common characteristic of tropical systems is if you are on the right side of the storm track, and again, we depict a storm track right in this area, right here. If you are in this area, uh, you oftentimes get enough wind shear with the accelerating system pushing basically from south to north that it increases the chance of tornadoes. And in, in, indeed, I expect to see isolated tornadoes in these areas along the I-95 corridor region anytime from tonight through tomorrow evening. Isolated tornadoes certainly on uh, the table here as, it, as one of the impacts of this system. Again, that generally occurs on the right side of a northward moving tropical system, especially an accelerating tropical system that just that kind of a movement and uh, directional movement adds to the wind shear in the lower part of the atmosphere. So again, you have an accelerating system and you have the threat of isolated tornadoes on the right side of that uh, path. Now, in terms of rainfall, likely the heaviest rainfall will be along this path here in places like central Pennsylvania, as uh, opposed to, for example, the New Jersey coastline. Certainly it looks like the heaviest rainfall over the next 48 hours will be places just to the north and west of I-95, central PA, and uh, uh, just to the west in the uh, Virginia suburbs of DC, for example. However, I do expect heavy rainfall along 95 and all the way to the coast, just not quite as high amounts as to the west of I-95. But grounds are pretty well saturated now with the heavy rains of uh, the last several days, so certainly flash flooding is a concern throughout the Mid-Atlantic region, and especially uh, in those areas across, let's say, central northeastern PA, down across uh, central and western parts of Maryland and Virginia. Again, uh, several inches of rain can fall along this path, but even in the big cities, D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, two plus inches of rain fall is on the table by the time we get to late tomorrow night. The weekend was looking quite nice. Places like D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, uh, skies gradually clear after midnight in the uh, mid-Atlantic region uh, going into the morning hours on Saturday. It looks like nice weather for the bulk of the weekend in the mid-Atlantic region. Really, right through the middle part of next week, spectacular weather for the uh, Great Lakes, the Midwest, the Mid-Atlantic, and the Northeast U.S. with comfortable temperatures and humidity levels. Well, let's stick with the Canadian forecast model. It's done a pretty good job with this storm system, so I want to stick with that right now. This is the total rainfall amount uh, by Sunday morning for this storm system. And again, the general idea that I uh, portrayed a moment ago is that the heaviest rain will fall generally underneath that uh, storm track here, place like central northeastern PA, uh, western and central parts of Maryland and Virginia, and less lesser amounts across the coastal regions. Eastern New Jersey, Delmarva Peninsula, all in all less rainfall from this kind of a path as compared with I-95 and especially to the north and west of I-95. Having said that, expect that two plus inches of rain in D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, and again the grounds are pretty well saturated already throughout much of the Mid-Atlantic region, uh, so there certainly can be some flash flooding. Still some tremendous rainfall today over North Carolina and the southern part of Virginia, and all in all just a, a very, very uh, excessive rainfall amounts across South Carolina, uh, again with upwards of 25 inches when all is said and done, and North Carolina and portions of Georgia as much as 10 to 15 inches of rain uh, from the system as well. Well, let's now look at the surface forecast maps using the zero Z run of the Canadian model. Now inland over South Carolina, it will the uh, central pressure will certainly uh, uh, weaken, in, in other words, the central pressure will rise 
over the next 6 to 12 hours or so as it moves over land now, 997 millibars. But the main point here is that you still have this tropical moisture just feeding in from the south and east. So while the, the uh, pressure uh, rises, in other words, the storm weakens, you still have tremendous rainfall potential here with this feed of tropical moisture coming in from the southwestern Atlantic. Now, let's move forward in time here and watch what happens with this particular Canadian model run. It, uh, it starts to accelerate millibars now up to 1,002 uh, over the next 6 to 12 hours or so. Again, pressures will rise and here comes that very, very heavy rainfall. And this is a mountainous region here, uh, the higher terrain of western Virginia uh, eastern West Virginia absolutely flash flooding potential here in this particular area and then that pushes up with some tremendous rainfall later on tonight into tomorrow central PA uh, central Maryland Virginia even down to DC some very heavy rainfall uh, uh, again the main impact period for DC Philadelphia New York City will be from tonight into tomorrow evening however today there will be some heavy downpours associated with those outer bands that, again, are well out ahead of the tropical storm. Then we go out a little farther in time, and that heavy rainfall shifts into northeastern PA and uh, into uh, east-central PA, southeastern PA. And this is a big concern because we have these rivers here that are pretty full of water right now. Susquehanna River, for example, have to watch for potential flash flooding here especially along the river areas, northeastern PA, central PA. Uh, again, keep an eye on the Susquehanna River, for example. This is now midday on Friday. And again, with that track over in this area right here, this whole region will be on the right side of that advancing uh, tropical storm system. And there will be some shear associated with that northward moving, accelerating tropical system. In other words, this is the area where uh, be on the lookout for isolated tornadoes uh, anytime from later on tonight through the day on Friday and into Friday evening. So on the right side of that storm track, watch out for the uh, threat of isolated tornadoes. Let's move out a little farther in time now. This is Friday evening and there may be kind of a squall line setting up as the final punch from the remnants of Tropical Storm Debbie, uh, that squall line like, moving into the I-95 car region tomorrow evening. So there might be what, like one final band of heavy showers and embedded thunderstorms early Friday night. And then that continues to accelerate. Skies tend to clear DC, Philadelphia, New York City after midnight on Friday going into Saturday morning. And the front clears the coast here, a frontal system by Saturday morning clears the coast right in this area right here on the back side of that tropical system which by this time is all the way up into heading into southeastern Canada by early Saturday again it's accelerating to the north and east but this is just a tremendous air mass uh, dropping to the south and east at this particular time it'll begin to be felt in the mid-Atlantic region on Saturday but very nice weather expected uh, not only for the bulk of the day on Saturday, uh, but Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday as well. And this whole part of the nation, the Mid-Atlantic, the Northeast U.S., the Midwest, the Great Lakes. So let's go out a little bit farther in time. And here we go. That tropical system long gone on the second half of the upcoming weekend. And we have just a, a tremendous air mass, cooler than normal for this time of the year, comfortable temperatures and humidity levels again very nice weather on the heels of this tropical system uh, in uh, this entire part of the nation saturday sunday monday tuesday and wednesday one more map i want to show here looking ahead to potentially another tropical storm threat and this last map is the madden julian oscillation one of those teleconnection indices i like to follow here uh, especially important during this time of the year, the NJO as it is known. This is a particular map uh, that is uh, used to display the particular phases 
of the Madden-Julian Oscillation that basically reflects the positioning of a tropical disturbance that moves along the tropics on a, on a regular basis and depending on the location of that tropical disturbance along the uh, tropical uh, region around the world uh, you can kind of get a, an idea of temperature and precipitation patterns in other parts of the world and the way to uh, look at this kind of a plot and we've shown this before here is that things move counterclockwise uh, excuse me in this direction right here um, yeah, counterclockwise motion here, and this is showing the forecast of the MJO going out for the next several days or so. This is the phase right here, phase one and phase two, and finally phase three. Again, that reflects the, posi the particular positioning of the tropical disturbance here as this moves in the counterclockwise fashion, and the point is, it's moving into phase two and phase three by the middle of August. That is an active time period, usually in the tropical Atlantic. In other words, this is kind of a time period here to watch out. Maybe the 15th, the 20th or so for possible tropical system uh, to impact anywhere in the eastern U.S., the southern U.S., Gulf of Mexico, southwestern uh, Atlantic Ocean. This is a concern. This is just raising a red flag at this time. There are a couple of waves to start that we'll have to start to look at in the eastern Atlantic uh, over the next several days or so. But this is kind of giving us a, a red flag. Now watch out in phase two and three of the MJO this time of the year. That spells potential trouble. So something to look for uh, perhaps in that August 15th to August 20th time period. That's it for now. For ArcFieldWeather.com, this has been Meteorologist Paul Dorian.